Dear friends, are you reconciled? Dear friends, last month we spent time walking through what it means to be reconciled with God. Because of our sin, we were fundamentally incompatible with the holiness and goodness of God. So our relationship with him was broken. God took the initiative and reconciled our broken relationship with him through Jesus on the cross so that our relationship can be restored. We looked at 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As you see, the, reconcili the reconciliation with God is intertwined with reconciliation with others. Human hostility to God has been overcome. We can be part of God's family now. As those who are part of God's family, human hostility to one another must be overcome. We cannot have reconciliation with God without human reconciliation. Paul ends the book of 2 Corinthians with this in chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. As Christians, because of the cross, there is a reversal from the ways of the world. The reconciliation, restoration, and peace with others is not meant to be one driven by guilt, duty, or a holier-than-thou attitude. It is supposed to be the natural overflow of the love, grace, and peace that is the Holy Spirit filling in our hearts, and living as God's reconciled people. The evidence or fruit of our reconciliation with God is our restoration of human relationships. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he taught so many things that were counter to the world and were reversals of how we normally understood relationships. In Matthew 5, for example, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons and daughters of your Father who is in heaven. The offended party now takes the initiative, just as God did with us. It's no longer about waiting for the other side to make the first move. Now, I want to be clear. It doesn't mean that we excuse all injustice and evil. We seek out reconciliation because there is a need for it. Something wrong was done. It must be named, it must be exposed, and it must be corrected. We're not expected to give out cheap grace. Our reconciliation with others comes with the acknowledgement of hurt, offense, or wrongdoing. But as Christians, our attitude is changed. We no longer look for punishment and revenge. We can let go of our pride and approach people with humility. We are willing to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, engage, love, and forgive people that have offended us, or are estranged from us, or are different from us, or even hostile towards us. We are willing to put in the work for restoration, healing, and peace. Friends, the reality is we live in a broken and hostile world. There is war and conflict all around us. Violence is on the streets, and there's violence in our homes. Hostility exists between different races and ethnic groups. There is hostility between different countries. There is hostility between different religious groups. Hostility between political parties. There are countless broken families and broken relationships. There are arguments and competition, even in our churches and ministries. Throughout history, many times, the people of God were the ones 
who brought peace, healing, and restoration to the broken world. Being the bringer of hope and love during disasters and tragedies. But sadly, also, many times, people who call themselves Christians and often in the name of God were the ones causing the brokenness, violence, and hostility in the world. I believe that we all need to return to the cross where everything was reversed and remember that our sin and death were overcome by Jesus, who showed us what love really is and how to love one another. We have received the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation and a restored relationship with God that was previously impossible. If we are a new creation, shouldn't we reflect the love and goodness of God to one another and to the world? Shouldn't we be people who restore comfort and bring peace? The old life and the way of the world today is a life of division and conflict, protecting our rights, our feelings, our pride. But there is a new life in the cross. We are a new creation. Let us receive the gift of reconciliation with God in Jesus Christ and go into the world to share the good news of this gift with others. Peace to you.